Today on the show, some thoughts on weekly track purses and why drivers should get more involved, plus news on LaSalle and Calistoga and more. Let's go. It's Wednesday, March 8th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. On yesterday's show, we talked about the reaction to the news that Port Royal was bumping their weekly purses uh, to the now 5,000 to win regular for 10 races. Uh, that has them on par with tracks like Knoxville and Hucitz, Williams Grove. One of the sidebars of that news, which we also talked about yesterday, was the heat that Ohio tracks continued to take for not having better purses. I wanted to double back to this today because I got a few points to make and I'm curious kind of what the expectations really are for race teams that run big divisions weekly at a track. And we're going to, this is kind of mostly around 410s, uh, but this could be for any real big division, late models, whatever. I know everyone always wants more from these purses, but how much is really needed from these purses? We know in places like central Pennsylvania, if you're at the sharper end, it's possible to make a living as a driver. Not everyone is doing it. The crew members certainly aren't. Car owners are not making back their investment. In most places, though, the idea of running a track weekly and making enough money to pay your bills just isn't possible. And that's really how it should be. Making a living as a professional race car driver just isn't for everyone. So from there, what are we really talking about? Are we talking about covering costs? You know, what, what exactly uh, do we need the extra money for? And I'm not saying that teams don't deserve the extra money. I'm just curious what the reasoning behind this is. We've seen social media posts in recent days about guys with too much TI on their cars and carbon fiber. Uh, and, you know, what exactly is the need? What exactly is the ask? Thanks to Bill V over at SprintCarRatings.com, we've got a decent look at what some 410 tracks pay to win weekly. And a lot of these Ohio tracks are 3000 a win from a total feature purse of around $12,000, $13,000. For those higher weekly purses, though, you know, you're looking at a doubling of the total payout. Knoxville, pay, uh, Knoxville pays 5000 a win from a total of more than $28,000. There's just no way a track can make that kind of a jump from a feature purse of 13,000 up to 28,000. I think to even bump the winner's share from, you know, say you went from 3,000 to 5,000 with no other changes down through the field, that's $2,000 a night has to come from somewhere. So if that means ticket sales, that's an extra $100 or 100 extra 100 tickets a week uh, at $20 each. That's a big leap to make if you're a promoter to try and figure out a way to bring in 100 extra people a week. I'd like to see some of these drivers and teams really take ownership of some of these tracks from their end. If you want more, let's help out, let's bring more. If the track is important enough for you to race at weekly, then make a commitment to help in promoting it. Instead of adding cash to a weekly purse, if I'm a track owner right now, I'm creating a bonus program for promotion. Your team and driver will get extra cash for posting on social media about the race, going on local media or podcasts to talk about upcoming races, rolling your car out somewhere to draw a crowd at a shopping center, you know, or other similar things. Do your part as a driver to help that track draw more folks in. One of the reasons why I've throttled back on doing interviews here is because I get tired of trying to chase people. You either can't get a response or you get something set up and then you get ghosted. It's just not worth the effort. And over the last 90 days, I've had over 300,000 people tune into one of my shows. So it seemed to me like a driver would want a chance to get their name and sponsors in front of a group like that. But man, uh, many can't be bothered to follow through. So if you're not doing that for yourself and for your team, we know you're not doing it for your racetrack. Let's get involved. Let's help these racetracks out. Let's make this a partnership. What can we do? You know, a rising tide raises all boats. So if a track is doing their part, they're doing everything they can, get involved, do your part. If a track is good enough to race at, get involved. Uh, there's a little bit of racetrack news floating around this week I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit. Uh, we've got updates for LaSalle Speedway and Calistoga. First, you may have seen the story floating around, but LaSalle Speedway in Illinois is for sale and has been apparently for a while, uh, maybe all the way back to since it closed in the 2021 season. The price was recently reduced to $1.9 million dollars. Track owner Kerry Izzo cited the difficulties in getting employees and racers at the track as some reasons for it being put up for sale. The quarter mile track sits about uh, 90 miles south and west of downtown Chicago, sits on about 57 acres. The Izzo family has owned the track since 1991. Uh, it's been a host of series like Summer Nationals, Mars, IRA and MOA Sprint Cars, the MLRA, and even the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. While the track remains for sale, Izzel told uh, Outside Groove that she's open to other options to keep the facility operating, like bringing in outside investors. The other track that continues to have a murky existence is Calistoga Speedway in California. I don't believe we've had any racing there since 2019, and the track and the surrounding fairgrounds have basically been in flux since then. 
City officials wanted to buy it in 2020, but the pandemic put the screws to their plans. Then last year, the city council agreed unanimously to purchase the property. Also includes a golf course and several other buildings, but it was pending a vote by the local community. The deal would cost $15.9 million for the initial purchase and an additional $9.1 million in improvements. Uh, and they're going to use a tax levied on lodging, commercial and industrial uses, vacant land and real estate, all of that to pay for it. But that vote happened last night and local residents did not pass the measure in the special election. It needed two thirds of voters to say yes, but nearly 70% voted against the measure. So what happens now, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's probably not good for the possibility of reopening the racetrack there. I always try to keep you guys updated on cool dirt racing content out there and Flow Racing announced another documentary piece yesterday. Coming soon, uh, they're going to go behind the scenes with Jonathan Davenport for what they are calling Dirty Dollars. Looks like they'll be talking about his $2 million season in 2022 when we get to see his Dirty Dollar Ranch. The announcement doesn't say anything about when this will premiere, but hopefully soon. Uh, and I kind of got on Michael Rigsby a little bit up, uh, on Twitter last night, but we uh, he did say the Dirt Doc series that's following Kyle Larson uh, will get rolling in April. And I've been curious about that. I know some of you have as well. The last thing we heard was the quote spring. Uh, so now at least we have a 30 day window of knowing that it'll happen sometime in April. Uh, you can add young uh, Chase Randall to the list of drivers who are planning on hitting all 11 points paying high limit races this season. The Texas driver released his sprint car schedule yesterday, which will be centered around weekly 360 competition at Knoxville. Well, uh, he's going to run for the track championship there. The team ha also has a sizable slate of 410 racing, though, coming up, including those high limit races. They're going to also have starts with the Outlaws. We'll see them at the Eldora Million, the Knoxville Nationals, and more. It's a pretty healthy slate of sprint car shows all around the country. Uh, and this is coming on the back of uh, a successful stint down under for Randa, uh, where he was impressive at a lot of those shows. You can see Chase's full schedule on his social media channels, or you can see it on the screen right now. Uh, one event note for you, the Spring 50 at Florence has been postponed from this weekend to April 1st because of weather. The 10,000 and Winlay model show was set to draw some big names, uh, but fans will now have to wait until March 25th to see the season opener at the Kentucky Racetrack. In podcast land this week, Wing Nation has Dylan Sisney. I actually co-hosted Wing Nation uh, with Steve Post yesterday, so check that one out. Good stuff uh, with Sisney on his uh, win at Port Royal. Uh, and his season ahead, some of his plans, things like that. Loud Pedal has Vince Welch. Uh, Open Red has Bundy and Ethan Mitchell. Forward Bite has Chris Ferguson. Ohio Dirt has Ryan Prosser and Shane Rahal. Quick Time has Carson Macedo. Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks has Kyle Hammer. All Gas No Breaks has several new interviews. Hoagie's Garage has Brant O'Banion and Austin Lloyd. In which on Dirt has Fergie as well. There are also new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, and Dirt Track Confessions. To see all of these shows, all of the new episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. And there are three shows again on the streaming schedule today with more IMCA racing on Speedsport plus Flow Racing 24-7 and Dirt Vision. Now, see that full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good Wednesday out there. We'll be right back here tomorrow.